Hey everyone, Brian from Witch Doctor, <clears throat> doing a follow-up to the uh, primer seeding depth test. In the last primer depth test, we found that primer seeding has a major impact on, on outcomes like uh, the size of your group. Uh, it was clear that a seeding depth that placed the primer into the primer pocket at nine thousandths um, was an ideal uh, range. Um, SAMI guidelines recommend eight thousandths. So, <clears throat> it's probably eight to nine thousandths or maybe seven to nine thousandths, something in that range seems to be the ideal uh, seeding depth. Um, in our test, the last test, we found that the aggregate of five five-shot groups for, for nine thousandths seeding depth was 0.1992, so that, that's a pretty good <clears throat> ag in the ones, uh, especially for a test rifle, test barrel. Uh, flush was 0.4282 and, and sending that uh, primer in 13 thousandths was 4321. So um, definitely flush and uh, really deep in there um, didn't do too well, but uh, 9 thousandths seemed to have done the best. Um, when you look at the anatomy of a primer relative to a primer pocket, you can see that the anvil protrudes beyond the primer cup. And so um, when seated at nine thousandths for the BR4 primers that we used in the last test, the anvil is compressed nine thousandths. But the primer cup itself has four thousandths clearance from the bottom of the primer pocket. And we'll show you kind of a... Uh, I drew, <laughs> drew up a little picture here for you so you can take a look. Uh, let's zoom in. So if you look here, you can see for a BR4, you have, this is a case here, a piece of brass. This is the Norma 6 PPC brass. Um, the actual primer pocket itself is 0.122. Um, thousandths of an inch high. Um, the BR4 primer itself has a primer cup that's 0.109 thousandths and the anvil protrudes 0.013 thousandths. So um, when you stick the cup into the primer pocket and, and you give it 9 thousandths seating depth, um, you end up having about 4 thousandths from the top of the primer cu cup to the um, top of the primer pocket there uh, but the anvil still compresses nine thousandths okay so keep that in mind it's still compressing nine thousandths so um, that was interesting information um, and so what I was wondering was well you know if we uh, seem to have seated a primer that was fairly short uh, in height um, and it, it, it allowed a little bit of space between the top of the primer um, cup and the um, top of the primer pocket there. What if we used a primer that was uh, taller where um, if you seated it, you know, nine thousandths, the primer cup itself would, would hit the top of the primer pocket uh, and, uh, but still um, compress the anvil at nine thousandths. So, I was wondering about that, like, does it really matter, you know, <laughs> basically where the cup lies, um, or does it really matter where the anvil uh, is compressed? So um, we went ahead and tested that here with this next series of tests. Okay, so what we ended up doing was we took a CCI uh, a set of CCI um, BR4s and use those. We set them at 9 thousandths um, seating depth. Um, and then we took CCI 450s and we set those at 9 thousandths seating depths. Now the difference is, is the BR4, the primer cup itself um, is shorter. It's 0.109 and the 450 is, is higher, uh, 0.113. So when you seat the BR4, into their nine thousandths, you get about four thousandths there um, of, of clearance from the top of that primer cup to the top of the primer pocket. And I'm referring to the top of the primer pocket being this part here. Um, 
I know other people refer to it differently and that's fine, but I'm referring to that as the top part uh, simply because when you are priming, you know, and, and you're orienting a bullet upwards, uh, that that's the top, not the bottom. Um, the 450 here, when you when you put that in 9,000, it tops off right at the top. So it's, it's gonna be touching there. So um, just wanted to test that out and see if does the actual you know cup itself and the dimensions of the cup and where it lies in that pocket play a role or is it simply the amount of uh, anvil um, compression? Because we're getting the same anvil compression here. We push that primer up there and that anvil compresses nine thousandths. Same thing with this. We push that uh, primer up there and the anvil compresses at nine thousandths. It's just that four thousandths of it doesn't have any actual cup around it, but in this one, it the entire compression, uh, compressed anvil has the cup around it. So um, anyway, so we're gonna go ahead and test that puppy out and see what happens. All right, so you may be saying, you know, well, wait a minute, BR4s are different than <laughs> than 450s and you're right 450s are considered a magnum primer uh, BR4s are not so um, what I ended up doing was you know I, I re recognized this so I loaded up some rounds I took 15 rounds with 450s um, seated them flush to the case head um, and that represented zero anvil compression um, I use the exact same powder, load, bullets, brass, loading practices, um, etc. that I used for the first um, series of tests with the BR4s. I then shot them all in, in three five-shot groups and look at the averages of the five-shot groups for this. Um, and, you know, even though I realize this is not a direct comparison because I shot these on, the diff on a different day than I did the BR4s, so, you know, there was a little bit of different atmospheric conditions and whatnot, but I wanted to at least have a ballpark estimate of just how different these primers perform relative to the BR4s, just so I can give, you know, get a sense for, am I comparing apples to oranges or, or am I comparing, you know, uh, similar types of apples. Anyway, um, in the data on the comparison is that with the 450s, my velocity was 3338.3 on average. With the BR4s, it was 3352.5 on average. Um, with the standard deviations for 450s, 13.3, BR4, 16.4, that tells me that there's lots of, um, the variance in, in the velocity, average velocities for these two is not uh, that great. They seem to be pretty much the same or very, very similar. Um, grouping size was in the threes. Um, 450s actually had just about a little bit of a smaller uh, grouping there. So. Um, the points of impacts were very similar. That was, you know, very interesting to see. Um, we had um, over here, uh, you have the BR4s and you see this kind of pattern here, um, a, what I call the, the reverse Africa pattern. <laughs> it's kind of like uh, um, flipping over uh, Africa. Um, and then these were a couple shot with the 450s. You can see the point of impact is kind of in the same spot down low there. Um, and then you can see that kind of um, pattern where it kind of goes up to the right. Same thing here, you see it down low, pattern up to the right. We did get one shot in each of these that kind of went left on us uh, for some reason, but the overall pattern was was very much the same. So. Um, anyway, I'm looking at all this data and I'm looking at velocity, standard deviation, group size, group pattern, and I'm thinking they're they're very very similar. Um, I'm I'm in fact if I was at a match and I ran out of BR4s and all I had were 450s, I'd pick it up and use the exact same load. Okay, so for the main test, or we'll call test number two. I loaded 50 rounds. Um, I used 29.4 of N133. That's what I used in the last uh, primer test that I used. Um, I have to tell you though, I did switch lots. Uh, my, my powder from the last test ran out. Um, so I had to take an entirely new lot. Um, it was from the same year, but it was a different lot. So <laughs> I was kind of you know wondering, hmm, are these gonna shoot the same? But I went ahead and just loaded the 50 rounds anyway, expecting it, at least it's the same year. Usually I get pretty 
good lot to lot consistency uh, within a year for N133. So I just kind of took a little risk there. Um, I used Paul Porosky's uh, amazing Patriot bullet, again, seated 13,000 from the lands. 6 PPC, Norma Brass, annealed, I mollied the internal necks. I did all the same stuff that I did for the previous um, primer tests that I did. Um, the only difference was that uh, 25 rounds had the BR4s seated 9,000s into the primer pocket and 25 rounds had the 450 seated into the 9,000s. Uh, that's the only difference, so I really isolated it to that. I used the same Bat Nouveau rifle that I've used for all my previous, for a lot of my uh, previous testings. All rounds were shot on the same day so that atmospheric conditions were relatively constant. Um, let's see, um, there was a little bit of a difference um, in, in, in the day that I shot these than the previous primer test. The day that I shot this test was very windy. Uh, and the barometric pressure was a lot lower than usual. Uh, it was at 29.48. Um, we are usually over 29.7 and typically in the 29.930 range. So having a day where it was 29.48 with a lot of wind um, was not an ideal shooting scenario. And I was fully expecting to get massive groups uh, and, and have a lot of trouble trying to shoot in the same condition, if you will. Um, the air was very turbulent and um, anyway what ended up happening too was on this target here if you can see closely you can see one that went way up um, I actually right after I shot that looked down the scope and saw that it went way up and thought wait a minute I had perfect aim point on that one how did that one go way up and then all of a sudden my target starts uh, wavering back and forth um, because the wind was was really pushing into it and as I was looking at it, um, I can see, you know, through my crosshairs that it actually pushed the target back, which um, actually was the reason why this bullet went high, uh, because the target backing like got pushed back and the bullet went right into it high. So anyway, that I don't think that that was a legitimate flyer. I think that that was because wind blew the target back. So I ended up just kind of omitting that data point from all the calculations here. Um, and let's look at that, those calculations and those results. Uh, for the BR450, we had an average velocity of 3326.2. Again, these, these, these are five five-shot groups, and this is the average of all those. Um, standard deviation of 9.06. Average grouping, which was the aggregate of the all five-shots group, five-shot groups was 0.2723. With the BR4, the average velocity was 3327.2. St average standard deviation was 11.72. Average group size was 0.2901. Um, so basically, it does look like that lot of powder, the the same year but a different lot is a little bit slower than um the the than the powder that i used in the previous test um but um it still shot pretty well i'd say for having the same exact load because uh in those conditions i was expecting um a lot of trouble in fact i was thinking man i might have to just hang up this test and head home and wait for another day because it was it was pretty nasty uh swirly winds switchy winds all kinds of stuff so um, anyway, I ran an analysis of variance on this data and actually found that there was no statistically significant difference between uh, the 450s and the BR4s on any of these variables. Okay, so in conclusion, building on the previous findings that showed that the anvil compression of 9000s was ideal relative to other levels of compression, um, this test showed that primer cup size, nor the location of the primer cup in relation to the um, top of the primer cup, did not have an impact on precision. So in conclusion, the anvil compression is the key variable, um, and it is recommended that you compress the anvil at either the SAMI spec, which is eight thousandths, um, or nine thousandths, like we saw in this test. Um, obviously, try testing it yourself. You may find that Seven thousands may work better than eight or nine, or eight works better than seven or nine, or, or nine works better than seven or eight or something. So I, I would just go ahead and test it out, but um, I recommend starting in that range uh, because you'll probably find some pretty good results. 
Uh, if you do uniform your primer pockets, be sure to measure their depths after reaming them so that you can be sure to seat your primers to the ideal level uh, for the um, anvil compression. Okay, all right, everybody. So that concludes the test. Anvil compression is the big factor for primer seating. So uh, make sure that you take all your measurements and, and uh, make sure you get that anvil compressed uh, around eight, nine thousandths, and you should be good to go with your primer pockets. Uh, your primer pocket seating. Okay, everybody. Thank you. Please um, subscribe, like, and share.